Morning, folks. Well, I guess I put this off as about as long as I can. It was a, a chilly 18 degrees this morning, but it's warmed up to a sweltering 20 now. <laughs> and it's noon, so it's probably going to start going the other way if I don't get after this. I've been putting it off, but uh, I don't have that much more to go. I just have to put the linkage together and bolt it back on but uh, I think the most exciting video in the world I know that if you're if you're having these four-wheel drive problems with this and you're thinking about doing a cable conversion uh, at the end of this I'll kind of go over it real quick just what exactly I did the rest of you <laughs> I know you're bored silly <laughs> bear with me <laughs> hopefully um, once I get this thing put back together and after Christmas is over maybe before that I can get back to doing something more fun than this so anyhow here we go well if I wait for warmer weather to do this it's gonna be June so here we go so the instructions say, pretty doggone dark in here, you might not even be able to see this anyway. This is the housing for it. The instructions say to slide this in here with the, with the fork out of the old one facing toward the cable. Okay, so that's simple enough. And then it says to screw this in to the cable roughly a half an inch. If I can get it to start. Okay, there we go. Okay, then there's three little clips that go on here. So, looks like you have to do it with it underneath the truck too because it's on the end of this cable. That's going to make things a little more difficult. I don't know if you can, I don't know, maybe this ain't going to work for a video that's too dark under here. Alright, so these little clips, I was calling them a, a C clip. I guess they're an E clip, they call them, because of that little tab in the middle, which I don't think makes a bit of difference what you call them. Uh, looks like that one's going to have to be in first. You definitely don't want those coming off because they'd go right into your axle there if they did. I feel like they're all on there good. Alright, so well, well that's what that looks like. And it just goes this little pickle fork slides into that ring on that collar and then slide them back and forth. Uh, the next step it says is to pull the pull the shaft out all the way until that uh, clip right there, the furthest one on that side, uh, touches the housing. I didn't think it was on there because it blends in really well. But the old gasket is still on in place. The kit comes with a new one. And 
And I need to get that surface cleaned off anyway. Alright, so a little bit of brake cleaner. If I can hit the dang thing. This thing probably doesn't need it. I'm going to put a little bit of a gasket maker on the side that goes against this aluminum piece. But I'm not going to put it on the axle side so that if and when I have to take this off, it's not stuck to the axle, it's just stuck to the the uh, aluminum. Alright, this thing came before the old one had this cover plate on there. And mainly that clip just hold it, held in the vacuum line, so it really probably doesn't need to be on there. I'm going to put it back on anyway. And uh, that might work so somewhat of a skid plate. Uh, keep rocks and sticks and things from hitting that but first I need to put this on uh, and I need to cut the cut the end the plug end off of that put a couple of little uh, wire ends on it and hook to this put these bolts back in but before I do any of that I'm going to put this all put these bolts in here just finger tight and uh, Go back in and make sure that that cable actually slides back and forth the way it's supposed to. Make sure everything is in there straight and not bound up or anything like that. So that right now is pushed all the way in, which means it's out. Pull it forward, that should be locked in. Out. In. No, oh, it slides relatively easy. Put this all together and go try it out, see if it works or not. So there it is, buttoned up. Got the plate back on. Got my wires hooked to the, to the dash light. And my vent back in. Um, I'm going to need to start it up and figure out the vacuum line deal. But those vacuum lines, they turn into a steel line, comes all the way back up over to here, and then up to the motor that way through these plastic ones. Oh, well, it's really hard to know where these things are not working at, or even if that was the problem. It might be, it might be in the actuator, the vacuum one, uh, Maybe the diaphragm's cracked and it's not pulling it hard enough to engage it. I don't know. But turn it on and see which one of these is, if not both. I don't know. I might have to go get another cap. But I got to cork off that also. Should be able to pull these off right here and put the cap on it right there. Take this off and keep it with the spare parts stuff. Anyway, it should be done. There was... There was a couple of uh, zip ties to, to tie the cable to the axle, but that's stiff. I mean, I really don't think that needs them. I might use them up above, just make it sure it doesn't get against anything. 
but we should be done other than the cleanup go give this thing a try here in a minute so two-wheel drive on this icy little hill spins pretty easy let's see what happens when I put it in the four okay that's four there it is hard to reach down there Okay, my four-wheel drive light came on. Let's see if it feels like it's in four-wheel drive. It does not feel like it's in four-wheel drive. There. That felt like it went out further this time. Yep. And that didn't slip at all. Okay, so that is definitely in four-wheel drive. So, I'm back in business. That, uh, that sliding collar got to be just right, it seems. Otherwise, it's probably not going to lock in and slide in over that spline. That probably, I imagine, with the vacuum, it'd be the same way. Oh, yeah, that's kind of lurching like they do when you're turning sharp in four-wheel drive so one thing that this uh, cable deal right now I got dark in here uh, does that I I was reading about you can put it now in the two-wheel low without locking your axle in so you're not in four-wheel drive well, you're not in two-wheel low. It says you are, but you're in... Uh, what am I trying to say? I'm all screwed up. <laughs> you're not in four-wheel low, like the shifter says you are. You would be in two-wheel low. Which, I don't really see what the big advantage to that would actually be. Uh, it was saying that you could have it in low gear and turn sharper that way, but I don't know that it's really needed I don't know towing or something I think you'd still want to put in four-wheel drive maybe but the low gear on this was really low so anyway I'm back in the running thank you very much for watching and see you next time now that I can get up the mountain I'll try to do something a little more exciting <laughs> see you folks